Today we discuss how to press trousers or iron dress pants. So how to iron pants? It all starts with the prep work. I suggest to invest into a sleeve board with a wider end and a slimmer end, a spray bottle, a cloth, as well as a clapper, which is a wooden block. In addition to that, you can add a tailor's hem, which looks like a cushion, but is actually filled with sawdust. It's very stiff and it helps to get the round areas on the garment ironed perfectly. You can also invest in a Teflon undersole and that way you don't have to use the cloth and it's much easier to iron that way because you can be more accurate because you can always see what's going on. To learn more about all the equipment I use and where you can find it, please check out our first guide here. When it comes to pants, wool is much more wrinkle resistant than cotton. So if you're just starting out, I suggest start with wool first. Typically, I start with the top part of the trousers, which is also known as the rise. For best pants ironing results, you wanna iron as few layers as possible. Simply because when you iron, the steam is trapped at the bottom layer, which creates wrinkles there. So it's kind of a never ending cycle of ironing on the one side and getting wrinkles on the other. If you just have an iron board, use the waist of your pants and pull it over the board. That way you have a roughly flat surface and it's easy to do the detail work. As you can see, you get little waves in the fabric and you have to constantly stretch with your left hand when you're ironing with your right. Now, if you wanna make it easier on yourself and get even better results, use a sleeve board because that helps to drape things around. On top of that, you can use a so-called tailor's hem and that has a rounded shape just like your body. And because of that, it's very easy to iron because you don't have that excess fabric of waves and the result is stunning. A sleeve board just costs about 20 bucks and the tailors have about 10, so it's really a wise investment in my opinion. If you have pleated pants, you want the creases to be really sharp. To achieve that, you wanna use a so-called clapper. It's nothing but a piece of wood, usually oak, that is not varnished and not stained and doesn't have zap. It helps to remove the excess moisture and simply creates a very smooth, crisp result. You can also use it in areas where you see wrinkles or waves because there's simply too much steam. If you're concerned about ending up with shiny trousers, always add a damp cloth in between. Once I've made my way around ironing one pant leg, I pull over the other one and finish all the way around. The areas in between the belt loops are just ironed with a tip and you have to be very delicate and just lift your iron many times and don't have continuous motions. With a little practice, you'll be an expert in no time, especially if you invest in a sleeve board in a tailor's hand. Once you're done with the top part of the pants, it's time for the legs. First of all, I'll lay down the pants with the hems facing my iron. I'm trying to find the existing crease and iron over it again. I also wanna make sure that the bottom layer of the pant leg is laid as flat as possible. You may have to wiggle it around a little bit and find the perfect crease so it's exactly where it was before. Now I start at the bottom, either with a damp cloth and a regular iron, or if you have a professional iron, you can just use a Teflon sole without the cloth. Again, in order to get that perfect crispness, you want the clapper. Once I'm done with the front pleat of the pant leg, I iron the middle part of the pants very carefully because I don't want to create any wrinkles on the outside or the back side of the pant leg. Once I'm done with that and everything is flat, I can look at the back crease. This one is a little more difficult because there's no pleat on top. Again, I use the same steps. Iron and press, then clap. Once I'm done with the pant leg, I unroll the top layer and flip the pants around and repeat the procedure. First, I iron the front pleat of the other pant leg. Depending on whether it's sewn inward or outward, I sometimes also start in a different way so I can easily get that crease started well. Really getting that crease right is probably the most difficult thing, but once you have a clapper, you get it really crisp and by moving the fabric around and using your hand to assist your ironing hand, you'll always get the exact same line. Of course, cotton is much more prone to wrinkling than wool, and because of that, it's harder to iron, especially as a pair of pants. Also, it's more difficult to iron a dry pair of cotton pants instead of a wet one. Of course, you don't want it to be too wet, and if you have a dry pair of pants, simply spray it with water, put it in a plastic bag for 10, 15 minutes, and then iron. It'll make life much easier for you. So what do you do if, let's say, your chinos do not have pleats, but you want them? Well, first of all, keep in mind, there must be enough fabric because pleats use up more fabric than flat front pants. If there's enough fabric, I suggest you fold the pants based on the hem. 
Usually, you can line up the inside side seams of the pant legs with one another on each pant leg, and that gives you a very good idea of where the crease has to be, because ideally, you want it in the middle of the front kneecap. Honestly, the steps are the same. First, I lay out my pants, I fold up one pant leg, so I just have one in front of me, and I start ironing the front crease. If your pants have cuffs, I also press those, and I get the pleat in there too. Ideally, you want the sleeve board and the tailor's ham because it makes it easier to iron around the rise. Make sure to pull everything nice and flat before you iron over it, because if you don't, you'll end up with a wrinkle and it's harder to remove them. If you encounter a wrinkle, either spray the fabric directly or spray a damp cloth and then go over it with your iron. Make sure to stay in there longer so the water can evaporate, create steam, and release the wrinkle or crease. If the crease is just in a small area, I suggest to try to use your sleeve board to get to it so you can ideally just iron one layer and not two. Otherwise, you may end up with ironing out one wrinkle and getting another one on the other side. Try not to sweep back and forth in fast motions. Have short motions, controlled motions, and always go in the direction of the point of your iron. If you just have a regular ironing board, I suggest not to oversteam because otherwise you will get ripples and wavy areas on the other side of the pants that you're just ironing. Again, you don't have to worry about that if you have a vacuum board because it sucks away all that moist air. And always remember, press as few layers of fabric as possible. Always bear in mind, thicker fabrics are easier to iron than very thin and flimsy ones. So when you start, try to use a thicker wool fabric. Once you've mastered that, you can move on to the thinner fabrics that are much more prone to wrinkles. While the crease is relatively easy to achieve on a thin, flimsy fabric, the middle part of the leg is very hard to iron. So if you have a vacuum board, sometimes you can get away with just stretching and using the steam function. If you don't have a vacuum board, that's not an option you have. Instead, just lower the steam setting and try to gently and carefully press the center part of the pant leg. With a little practice, I'm sure we'll end up with dress pants that are wrinkle-free, very stylish, with a very sharp crease. If you haven't already done so, you may want to check out part one about all the ironing equipment, as well as part two about how to iron a dress shirt. Also stay tuned for part four about how to iron a sport coat or a suit jacket.